You'd think a series about teenagers in colourful costumes fighting aliens from space wouldn't be overly complicated, but here we are. Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka The Mad Dog and we're back with another video. These Power Rangers titles that have been released by Boom Studios are some of the best single comics that I've read in the last five years, which isn't too much of an achievement because of the fact that I haven't really read a lot of single issues in that time. However, this is a series that's only gaining more momentum and with that momentum is coming more series. So you had MMPR, you had Go Go Power Rangers, you had a Pink Rangers spin-off, you also had Mighty Morphin and then Power Rangers, you've got anniversary specials, you've got annuals and all of it just gets a little bit confusing. But don't worry, by the the end of this video I'll hopefully be able to clear up exactly what you need to buy and how you can collect that whether it be in trade paperback, deluxe edition or even if you're going to go down the single issue route. But starting it off we can't really talk about how to collect something if we don't know what we're collecting in the first place and this is going to be everything that Boom Studios has released so far. But kicking it off we've got the main Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series and this went from issue 0 to issue 55. There was three annuals and there was also a Shattered Grid finale. This is the mainline series that I think anybody that's trying to get into Power Rangers should start with but admittedly if you're looking on where to start with Power Rangers, I did a video last year when this channel was really young because talk about every starting point that you can imagine, give or take. However, due to the success of MMPR, Boom Studios released Go Go Power Rangers, which was a 32 issue series that ended late last year. And there was two specials in Back to School and Forever Rangers, but those were the two main Power Rangers comic series that were being released until 2020, at which point both of those ended and we had two new series. You had Mighty Morphin and you also had Power Rangers, and at the time of recording this video, there's been 12 issues for each so far. I'm also going to throw Power Rangers Universe in here which is releasing next month so you might be able to jump on with that. It says it's a limited series but admittedly I think because of the concept it's got the potential to run for quite a long amount of time. And right now you might be thinking to yourself that's only four series, it's not too complicated, what's this guy with a poor excuse for a Movember even talking about? And I kind of have to agree with you on that last part. But then we get into the one shots in the limited series and kicking it off we've got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Pink issues 1 to 6. I believe this was the first of the limited series series that were released and it follows Kimberly after a time during MMPR season 3. You've also got a 6 issue crossover with the Justice League that isn't really in continuity. You've got the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 25th Anniversary Special, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue 1 to 5 which is responsible for giving us those amazing toys from Hasbro. You've got the Ranger Slayer one shot, the Draken New Door mini series, Power Rangers Unlimited Air to Darkness and Edge of Darkness and so far they've also published 4 original graphic novels. The first is Power Rangers Aftershock which is set after the 2017 movie which not a lot of people watch, it doesn't look like we're getting a sequel and there's probably going to be more Power Rangers that are featured in this short video than there was in that two hour movie. You've got Soul of the Dragon which follows pretty much everyone's fan favourite character except for well myself because mine's Wes from Time Force and it follows him in his time after being a Power Ranger and you see what it's like when he's going into the older stage of his life. You've got Power Rangers the Psychopath which features the In Space Rangers, Corone and also the Psycho Rangers which if you're not sure who they are make sure you watch those episodes. And the latest one that they've released is Power Rangers Sins of the Future. And honestly this book's about 20 years too late for me because it follows the Power Rangers Time Force team after the time during the Wild Force crossover. So now we're going to be moving on how you can collect all these series and there's three options and it really depends on how deep you want to get into it. But we're going to go through these options in order of attractiveness because first up we've got these beautiful deluxe editions. Yep these are the ones that most people in the collected edition community are drawn to and so far we've had five released. The latest one only recently came out and I know that the channel sponsor Organic Price Books did an overview of it and if you're tempted to pick this book up or any other I definitely recommend checking them out because they don't even need the power to protect them because of the fact that they package the book so well. They've also got fast shipping and great customer services and if you use code WOOFWOOF you'll get $2 off your order and kind of similar to the fact that Power Rangers never seems to end you can use that code as many times as you like. But these deluxe editions only really tend to focus on the main MMPR line because volume 1 which was also called year 1 collects issues 0 to 12. Year 2 collects issues 13 to 24 and the annuals for 2016 and 2017. Shattered Grid which was the third volume that was released was the first one to really mix it up because it had MMPR issues 25 to 30 and also the Shattered Grid finale. Alongside the free comic book day issue number 1 which now that I'm thinking about it I didn't include that on that list earlier and it also made me a bit confused on how they're planning on collecting all these series because of the fact that it has Go Go Power Rangers issues 9 to 12. Now that's because of the fact that this was an event and those issues do directly 
directly tie into this. But then we've got the fourth volume, which was Beyond the Grid. It's a little bit thinner than all the ones that have been released so far, and it collects issues 31 to 39, and also the anniversary special. And the fifth volume that was recently released was Necessary Evil Part 1, which collects Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issues 40 to 47, and Go-Go Power Rangers issues 21 to 28. Now, it's already been announced that there's going to be a volume 6 that's going to release, I think, May next year, and this contains the remaining issues of both of these series. So you've got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issues 48 to 55, you've got Go-Go Power Rangers issues 29 to 32, and you've also got the Ranger Slayer one-shot. Now, personally speaking and being completely shallow, this is the best looking way to collect this series, and it does also contain all the covers, and I'm not too sure if the trade paperbacks do that, and it also collects the main story arcs of this series, which we're going to touch on a little bit later in this video. So if you don't really want to get invested into the majority of the Power Rangers universe and all the comics that are coming out, then I do recommend picking up these five hardcovers if you can get your hands on them. But that brings me on to the two downsides of collecting the series in this format. And the first point is that these are quite difficult to get your hands on currently. Yes, there's been a few reprintings over the years, and I do think that because of the popularity of this series, they will come back into print again at some point, but that day isn't today. But the second problem with collecting the series in this format, and I've touched on it already, but there is a massive amount of these series that isn't collected in deluxe edition. Yes, the main MMPR line is covered in this, but if you're also collecting Go Go Power Rangers, you're going to be missing issues 1 to 8, issues 13 to 20, alongside MMPR Pink, the Justice League and TMNT crossovers, and the countless other mini series and one shots that I spoke about earlier. Now, I'm not really too concerned about Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers, and that's the reason why I haven't mentioned that they're left out. I think when we get to a volume 7 of these hardcovers, we'll see exactly what they're planning on doing with that series. But in terms of the outlook for Go Go, well, it's not looking too great. But if it is that you did eventually want to have all of these series in the same format, then it isn't possible to have that through the deluxe editions. And none of us know what the future holds, and who knows, maybe Boom Studios will publish Go Go Power Rangers in a separate deluxe edition kind of similar to what everybody's been asking for for about three years now. But there are other ways that you can plug those gaps, which brings us on to the second way to collect this series, which is in trade paperback. All of the main MMPR series is now being collected into 14 trade paperbacks, which admittedly have quite a steep cover price considering the fact that some of these collections only have four issues. And you will also need to pick up the two volumes of MMPR The Lost Chronicles because this collects the annuals and also some of the specials. So those 16 trade paperbacks in total will collect the equipment equivalent of what these six deluxe editions will, alongside four trade paperbacks worth of GoGo Power Rangers. But they are going to be four random volumes because GoGo -Go Power Rangers is going to be collected in nine trade paperbacks in total. Issues 9 to 12, which was included in Shattered Grid, is I believe volume 3, and the remaining three trade paperbacks for this series is what's going to be included in the Necessary Evil hardcovers. So if it is that you wanted to get these deluxe editions and then just plug in the gaps with the random volumes of GoGo -Go Power Rangers, you'll need volumes 1 and 2, and volumes 4, 5, 6. And if you do decide to collect the series like that, good for you, but please do not tell me because it's just going to bug my OCD to no end. The current ongoing series of Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers are also collected in separate trade paperbacks, and so far they've had two volumes released, but I believe that they've got plans up to volume four already. And you can also collect all three issues of Draken New Dawn in a separate volume. And there's also been trade paperbacks of the Pink Rangers Solo series, the Justice League crossover, and the crossover with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So if you did want a comprehensive way of collecting this series, then the trade paperbacks is pretty much the only feasible route at this point. But there is one major downside to getting this in trade paperback and that's the fact it's just not as nice as the deluxe editions. And that's something that you're going to have to weigh up. Would you rather something that looks nice on your shelf or just something that's complete? The third option if you want to collect this series is of course the single issues. Now you heard at the beginning how many different ones that you'd have to collect and especially if you do want all the variant covers like I did when this series first came out, you're going to have a difficult time. But you know, if that is the route that you want to go down, good luck to you. I hope you do manage to find every single one. And also if you do manage to get every issue, it's impossible to get dicked over by any kind of collected edition, except with the original graphic novels, but you know, you can pick them up separately. Now the last thing that we're going to talk about is the reading order for this series, because it's something that I wish I would have done in some of my previous How to Collects. But it's all well and good saying that, oh you can get this in this format and that in this edition, but what if it is that you don't need to buy them anyway? So the first way that you can read this is in the order of release. These issues came out in a particular order, and there was probably a reason why MMPR started before GoGo, -Go. so you might be okay just reading them and then going back to GoGo -Go at the time 
when that was released. But that is a way that you can read this, and also you'll get all those crossovers and miniseries at pretty much the right time. The second reading order that we're going to look at is chronologically, which I imagine most people will probably want to follow, and the only reason why this is possible is because of Ryan Parrott's tweet that he sent out in September, which I can't lie was super useful in the creation of this video, so I'm going to leave his Twitter link in the description down below. But looking at this chronologically, you would have to start with Go Go Power Rangers, so issues 1 to 20 and also the two specials is set before Tommy was part of the team, so you can read them before you start reading MMPR. And you're probably wondering if that's the case, then why are issues 9 to 12 included in Shattered Grid? I'm not going to spoil too much here, but it is a tie-in, but it's not necessarily set in the same timeline. However, after issue 20 in Go Go, Tommy does join as the Green Ranger, at which point you can jump into MMPR. You can go straight forward and read issue 0 to 30 and also the Shattered Grid finale, and that will bring you up to a point where you can read the rest of Go Go Power Rangers, so issues 21 to 32, because at that point in the story, Tommy's the Green Ranger and he's also in the team. And you're probably thinking that I'm saying Tommy, the Green Ranger a lot, but that's because of the fact that this is Power Rangers and that series really does not survive without him. Which is a shame because some of the best series just don't have him in it. And then after you're done with Go Go Power Rangers, you can read MMPR issues 31 to 39, which was Beyond the Grid. But admittedly, and I don't think that a lot of people will agree with me, but if you've got no real knowledge of who the Power Rangers are beyond these comics, then I'd probably skip these next chunk of issues. And honestly, as much as I love Power Rangers in Space and Zeo and Lost Galaxy and some of the other series that were included in this, this is the slowest part of this series. And if I'm being honest, I'd probably have a bit of a palate cleanser if I was you, and I'd read some of the crossovers like with the Justice League and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at this point. And it'll also just give you a nice bit of a reprieve before you get into Necessary Evil. Because you can now read the rest of the MMPR run, you can go from issue 40 to 55 and just enjoy this series as the White Ranger comes into it. Ryan's tweet then recommends that you read the Ranger Slayer one shot and also Draken New Dawn. And it's particularly important that you read them before you jump into the two new ongoing series of Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers. And that'll pretty much have you caught up because that is the main continuity, except for the crossovers that I talked about, that's just for a little bit of fun. But if you wanted to catch up to the point that we're at today, then that's the route that I'd recommend going down. And stuff like Power Rangers Pink and the original graphic novels are specific to certain points in time for the TV show continuity. It's only going to be accurate to the point when this video is filmed because I don't know what series Boom Studio is going to announce in the future. Maybe they'll finally let me do my Gold Ranger mini series that I've been talking about. But yeah, if you're watching this video three years from the time when it was first made, there's a high probability that this isn't accurate anymore. And yeah, if you're watching a video that was filmed a few years ago, of course the information isn't going to be accurate. That's like going back to a supermarket and complaining that food's out of date because you brought it three years ago and then forgot about it in your fridge. But that's the video and if you could do me a massive favour, share this where you can so that hopefully this channel won't completely die out, but also we can get more people reading Power Rangers. I should hopefully be back with some new videos soon, but if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up and if you didn't, why did you get this far? But yeah, I guess that's the video and until next time, just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof! See you the next video.